Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here. Here's what we're gonna be creating. Nice little earthquake effect here. Um, don't try to adjust your screen. It is the video is shaking, don't worry. Um, the other thing that we're gonna be focusing on, and it was gonna be a tutorial all by itself, but you know, I thought I'd give, a, give you guys a little more, is you'll notice that this blurs out with these nice streaks. How is this possible, you ask? Well, through the power of 32 bits per channel. Now, if we look at this same effect, let's go find like a really, see this nice blurred out frame? If we look at this in eight bits per channel, we lose that nice streakiness, you see that? But, go into 32 bits per channel and we're back in business. See, look at this frame here, eight bits, excuse me, eight bits, 32 bits, eight bits, 32, eight, 30, okay, get the idea. Anyways, in real life, you see this vehicle here is uh, going pretty fast, so it's causing these light streaks, and um, that's sort of what we're recreating here. Um, and not to mention we're uh, creating a nice little earthquake in downtown Los Angeles. So, let's go ahead and get started. What I have is this footage, and this footage is not shaking. It's just uh, regular old footage. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this footage, drop it into a new composition. And the first thing we need to do is create that 32-bitness from this image. This is just a 8-bit video in QuickTime format. So how can we create super bright pixels out of these white areas? And basically, how can we make them streak like they were previously? Well, here's the tip. Duplicate the layer, choose effect, color correction, levels, change the input black to 0.95. Basically, crush everything but the really, really bright pixels. 0.95 works pretty well. Then, hit F4, change the transfer mode to add. So, in 32 bits per channel, the additive effect actually adds to the pixel value's intensity. So if we bring up our info palette and we roll over the bright area, you see up here we got uh, two. That means this white is twice as bright as regular white. And if we go here and duplicate that white, check that out, three, four, depending on how many times you duplicate it. In this case, we'll just duplicate it once. So now if I were to add a adjustment layer and with the layer selected, if I choose effect, blur, fast blur, now it must be in 32 bits per channel and the effect I apply must be 32 bits per channel. So if it wasn't, you might see this little character. But fast blur is a 32 bit per channel effect. So when I blur this out, check it out. See that kind of uh, brighter areas are kind of blowing out? Well, if we go to 8 bits, if I alt click on the 8 bits per channel, we don't get that. Only in 32 bits do we get that. So anyways, that's the cool tip for 32 bit people out there. Now then, to get this into a single layer, I'm gonna pre-compose it. Select the layers, composition, layer, I don't know, one of these freaking will do it. Pre-compose, choose OK. And now we need to create the uh, shakiness. So to do it, we bring up the position and the rotation. And if we alt click on the position, type wiggle, I've been using this a lot lately, wiggle eight comma 100 in parentheses. Play that back and we get some nice crazy wiggle. Now that's actually, that's a lot of wiggling. So let's, let's bring this down to say six and maybe 75. Okay, so not bad. Now, some of you are probably saying, hey, what's going on with the edges there? Well, we are wiggling it off the frame and we can see underneath it. So how can we fix that? Well, let's go back into the pre-comp. We have our two layers here. Select the first layer, choose Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile. 
and let's extend the edges of the layer by changing the output height and width to say 150 and click mirror edges then just copy this to both layers and now the edges of the bounds are now beyond the original then if we choose composition settings extend the width so we go multiply 1.5 we now make the composition larger so then when we close this our new comp will have room to be wiggled and in this case that should work well so anyway um, depending on how fast you do it you uh, may need to uh, zoom in a little bit or whatever so now we have the shaking going on we can also turn on the motion blur for the layer and for the comp and uh, create that blur that we want to see for now we'll just shut it off while we work also we can copy this expression, paste it to the rotation, and unfortunately that's a lot of rotation. So what we'll do is take the result of this, which is 30, and it changes um, anywhere from 0 to 50, because that's our expression. Let's change this to divide the value by 40. So now it just rotates a few degrees, maybe a little less, maybe we divide it by 25 but not too much, just maybe as much as an average cameraman. Okay, so this looks pretty good, it's like a 4.2. Only problem is when you use expressions, they are constant. You can't really animate them. How can we make it so we can control this? Hmm, well, we can use expression controls. Effect, expression controls, slider control. Now, with this slider control, we can animate the second value of our wiggle expression. To do that, we delete 50, and in place of 50, we take the pick whip and drag it to the slider control. We'll do that for both of these. We'll delete the 50, take the pick whip, drag it to the slider control value. Right now, it's set to zero, so nothing happens. We can even change the name of this by hitting return and typing... Uh, amount to shake it yeah that's good and then if we set a keyframe for the slider value move forward a little bit shake it 60 let it shake for a while maybe it goes up to 70 and then fades away to zero let's play that back Okay, so that was a, that was a quick one there. Um, but anyway, um, you can uh, extend this animation on, maybe make it slowly come in, slowly go off. Um, that is the tutorial. Um, remember, 32 bits are your friend, but if you don't have a night shot or something where it will really matter, well, don't waste your time. Just uh, follow the second half of the tutorial. Still looks good, just, you know, you lose out on, you know, those details. Kind of got that digital land of the lost look. And uh, that's too bad when you could have the look of Jurassic Park. Think about it. Land of the lost, Jurassic Park. Google that if you don't get it. Anyway, that's the end of the tutorial. Also, I want to thank everyone at the After Effects New York meeting. Uh... Everyone who came and uh, everyone I got to talk to, it was great seeing everybody. Um, for the next meeting, check out AENY.org. And of course, you can visit me, Andrew Kramer, at creativecow.net in the After Effects form. Or come check out my website, videocopilot.net. Anyway, we'll see you next time. I'm Andrew Kramer. And uh, remember, if there's an earthquake, um, stop, drop, and roll.